Hi there and welcome back, it's Jenna from McGuire. Now today's video is even longer than usual because I have a lot to share with you. I'm doing a product release close up on the newest Concord and Ninth release. But in addition to showing you the products, I wanted to show you a bunch of examples and some fun ways to use these products. So I'm hoping this is helpful to you in better understanding how these great products work. So I'm going to walk through the products and as I do so, I'll show you the cards that I made with them. I am always impressed by the creativity and brilliance of Concord and Ninth products. They are incredibly well engineered and very unique. Well, the stamp set I wanted to start with today is the Dahlia Turnabout stamp set. Now, Concord and Ninth has several turnabout backgrounds and I'll link to those videos here. They're very unique. You stamp them four times in four different colors, turning them each time to create a colorful background. Well, this time it's to create a fun little flower image. Now, I'm going to be working on some die cut squares today. I decided to use a four and a half by four and a half inch stitched square from Lawn Fawn. I just decided that this was a good size for a square card that I'll be showing you in a bit. Now, I am going to prepare this stamp. You only need to do this once. Once you prep your stamp, you have it ready to go for any time you want to use it in the future. Now to prep your stamp, you need the background of the packaging. That's what I have here. Or you can print their key on their website. You're gonna line your stamp, stamp down, onto that key. Once you have it lined up, you're going to take a ruler and draw on the back of the stamp with a permanent pen, a line that lines up with the lines on the key. So I'm basically putting a giant X on the back of my stamp. And where those two lines intersect is the center of our stamp. So now that I have this done, I won't have to do it again in the future. Now here is the back of my four and a half by four and a half inch die cut square. I'm going to draw an X on it so I can find the center point. I'm first going to show you how to use this turnabout stamp with a stamp positioner. However, I will show you a little bit later in this video how to do it if you don't have a stamping tool like the Misty. So I'm putting my square into my Misty. Again, this is the back of my paper so that I don't have to worry about that X. I'm lining up the X on my stamp with the X on the paper and then I close my Misty and now I know that that stamp is positioned exactly where it needs to be to stamp repeatedly. Now I'm flipping my square over and I'm going to do my stamping on the front. Now you could stamp these with any inks you want. You could do this on colored cardstock. You could do whatever you prefer. And every time you'll get a different look. I started with pink ink. I stamped it once. Now I am going to turn my square, just one turn, every time you want to turn it in the same direction. And I'm going to ink it up with the next color. This time I'm doing a peach color. Once I've stamped it, I can go ahead and turn my paper again. And I'm going to do this with four different colors. This is a great way to get a really fun, colorful image very quickly. Now, in the past, the Concord and Ninth turnabout stamps have been backgrounds. You create a large background with a beautiful pattern and lots of colors. This one is smaller. So you could do this one in your mini Misty stamping tool if you only have the mini. And you can do it with just an acrylic block, which again, I'll show you here in a moment. So here you can see the final result. Each time I just turned it once and stamped it in a different color. Such beautiful results. Now here's the card I made with it. I put the square onto a five inch by five inch white note card that I created. And I'll link to the square envelopes that I like to use. I black heat embossed the sentiment that you see here in the center using another one of the new Concord and Ninth stamp sets, which I'll show you in a little bit. So I decided to keep this very simple. On some of the pink petals, I added some Wink of Stella shimmer pen, just so it had some added shine. This would be a great card to mass produce in a bunch of different colors and maybe give as a gift card set. Now I wanted to show you another variation with a different look, and that is this holiday wreath card. So again, I'm working on that four and a half inch by four and a half inch square white die cut. Have my Misty still set up from before. I put a die cut mask circle in the center. I just die cut from some post-it notes and I put it right in the center of my square. And now I'm doing all my stamping as I did before, right over the mask. So I stamp it once in one shade of green, rotate it, stamp it again in another shade of green, rotate it and repeat until I have done four turns in four different colors of ink. Now when I remove that circle from the center, I'm left with what looks like a holiday wreath. 
So on this, I gold heat embossed a happy holiday sentiment and added little red Nouveau drops for berries. I mounted the square onto a five by five green note card. And I will again put this in a square envelope and I'll link to that source below. So this is where the sentiment is from. It's from the Magnolia Wreath stamp set from Concord and Ninth. And I'll link here to a video where I use the same stamp set for a different card. Okay, it's time for the second product in this release, and that is the Concord and Ninth Dahlia die. Now this die can be used with or without the stamp set, but I'm going to show you how great it is to use with the stamp set today, and I actually have two different examples for you. Now before we use the die, we need to get it prepped, just like we did for the stamp. Once you prep it once, you don't have to do it again. So this is one of the stamp turnabout flowers that I created in the center of a four and a half by four and a half square. You could do any size square you want. And I'm drawing pencil lines to connect the corners. This will show me where the center point is. Now I drew heavy pencil lines because I need you to be able to see it for the video. If you did this at home, you would just want to do soft pencil lines so you can erase them and use this piece later. What I'm going to do is line my die up with a set of the petals. I decided to cover up the blue petals. So I turn the die around until I'm covering all the blue petals. I can see one of the blue petals there in the center, but all the others are covered up. And my little dot at the center point on the stamped piece is lined up with the hole at the center of my die. Once I have it lined up, I put down a piece of tape to hold it there temporarily. Now, just like I did on the back of the stamp, I'm going to draw some lines on the back of my die. So lining up with those diagonal lines on the stamp piece, lining up my ruler, and drawing lines in the same place on the back of my die. I'm using a pencil because I simply cannot find my Sharpie on my desk anymore, but you could use a Sharpie if you wanted to. So now I'm going to connect the line here on the back of the die in the other direction. And now I have my centered lines on the back of my die, and I can use this over and over again anytime I want to use the turnabout stamp with the turnabout die. Okay, so now it's time to do some stamping, and then we'll do the die cutting. So I started my stamping just like I did before, but instead of doing four colors in four turns, I'm doing three colors in three turns, and I'm going to skip that fourth so that we could do some die cutting there instead. So on this piece, this time I'm lightly drawing my diagonal lines with a pencil because I want to use this piece this time. So I'm lightly drawing them and I try not to draw over my stamping because I don't want to mess the stamping up. Now I'm going to take my die and line up the pencil lines on the back of my die with the pencil lines on the paper. And the, really the key is to make sure that the center of your die, that tiny little hole, lines up with the center of your X on your paper. Now, once I have that lined up, you'll be able to see that those die cut petals are in the open areas where we didn't do any stamping. And now I can run this through my die cut machine. And what we'll end up with is like a peekaboo effect where some of the petals show through to the cardstock that we'll have behind it. Now, this may seem a little complicated with all the lines that we draw, but remember, you only have to prep your stamp and your die once, and then you'll have it done for all your card making in the future. So here you can see the final card. I use foam tape to add the stamped and die cut piece onto a five by five blue note card. I love that peekaboo effect. Now I kept the sentiment simple. I die cut thanks from this many thanks Concord and Ninth die set that they released quite a while ago. And I actually die cut thanks three times and stacked the letters on top of each other and put glossy accents on top for some fun dimension. Here's a second card I made with the same technique. This time I put the piece onto a peach colored note card and I silver heat embossed the sentiment hello and added that to the center. That hello is from the Dahlia stamp set also. Now I have one more example using the stamp and die because it's so much fun. This time I'm actually going to emboss with the die also. So I went ahead and stamped two colors with two turns onto my square here. Instead of four, I did two. And I also drew a light pencil X on the background. Now using the lines on the back of my die, I'm going to line them up with the pencil lines on my square and also line up that center point on the die. I'll press that down with some tape. I'm gonna run that through my die cut machine and this will die cut the first set of petals. So I have two stamped and one die cut at this point. 
Okay, so now I want to emboss the fourth set of petals. Now to do this, I will set up my die cut machine as I would an embossing folder. So for me, with the Big Shot, I go to tab one. I put down my cutting plate, and then I'm going to put down a Spellbinders embossing mat. So this allows me to emboss with my dies. This is a must-have tool for sure. Now I'm going to lay my piece down here, and I'm going to line up the die with the X again so that it die cuts those last petals. So you see that one open petal there towards the center? That one will show you which hasn't been done yet. It's, when I look through it, it's white, so I know that's the set that hasn't been done. Run that through my die cut machine with the embossing pad underneath it, and it presses the die into the paper, giving us that beautiful impression. So there we have an example where I did stamping, die cutting, and embossing with the die. Really like the look of this one. I put it on a blue note card and added a celebrate die cut to the center that I covered with some glossy accents. The celebrate die cut is from the Concord and Ninth All About You die set that they came out with a while ago. Now before we move on, I did want to show you a couple tricks with this stamp set. If you want to stamp your flower off center on the card, this is how you would do it. This is a six and a half by six and a half inch piece of cardstock. This is like my turntable. I created an X on it, and I can reuse this piece many times. I'm lining up my stamp with that X, close it into my Misty, and now I can use this turntable to stamp anywhere onto a white piece of cardstock to create to a card. So this piece of white cardstock is four and a quarter by five and a half. I can temporarily adhere it anywhere on my brown turntable here, and it'll allow me to stamp my flower where I want on my white cardstock. So here I'm positioning it kind of towards the bottom left corner of the turntable. And I can rotate this turntable and do my four stamping turns. And this allows me to stamp my flower kind of towards the top and off center. So if you don't want your flower to be centered, just make a large turntable, glue your paper temporarily onto the turntable, and then you can stamp away. Okay, now one more thing I wanted to show you with this turnabout stamp, and that is how to do the stamping if you do not have a stamp positioner. This is surprisingly easy. I have my square piece here with my X marked in the center, and I have my stamp with the X on the back of it. I'm going to ink up my stamp, and I'm going to stamp this by lining up the X on the back of my stamp with the X on my paper. Just looking down through the stamp, it's easy to line up. So I did one, now I'm going to turn it, and then I'm going to line the X's up again. Sorry my head gets in the way, but you really need to look from above to make sure you line it up. And check it out, I was able to stamp this four times by lining up that X, and I get that great result, even though I don't have a stamping tool. Now before I move on, I promised Lila I would show you some other cards that we made with the stamp set. These all use some colored cardstock scraps that we had, and we use kind of tone-on-tone -tone inks, and I was really happy with the results. I didn't film them because it was just something Lila and I did, but I wanted to show you what I did. Now for this, each turn of my stamp, I used a different ink, and you could use these on any color of cardstock. So here are the four different things I used for the four turns. For the bright white petals, I used the Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink, this is a pigment ink, so you need to heat set it to dry it. For the darker blue petals, I use Versamark ink, which just gives you a tone-on-tone -tone look. For the light white petals, I use Distress ink and Picket Fence. This is a beautiful white ink. And then for the fourth set of petals, I actually heat embossed with Hero Arts White Pearl Embossing Powder. This embossing powder kind of gives you a metallic look in whatever color cardstock you put it on. So it works with any color of cardstock, and you can see the beautiful look that you get from that powder. And by the way, I know I'm showing these quickly, so if you go to my blog, I'll have photos of these cards and a list of what products I used on each. Now on this coral card, Lila really wanted to try out my gold ink, so one of the turns has that shimmery gold look to it. Now for the four different turns, I did four different inks. For the bright white petals, again, I used the Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink. For the dark coral petals, I use Versamark ink that just gives you a watermark look. For those shimmery gold petals, I use the Delicata in the Golden Glitz, and it gives you a nice shimmer look to it. And then for those final heat embossed metallic looking ones, I used Hero Arts Pearl Embossing Powder again. 
So you can see how that pearl embossing powder picks up the color of whatever's underneath and gives it a metallic look. And here you can also see the subtle gold shimmer that you get from that Delicata ink. Now for the white heat embossed sentiment in the center, we use Sunshine from the Dahlia Turnabout stamp set. And Hi There is from this bare stamp set that I'm gonna show you a few minutes later in this video. Here's another example that I did, but this time I stamped it off center using the large turntable that I showed you earlier. I use Versamark ink for the darker colored petals. This time I used Delicata White Shimmer for the white petals. I did clear embossing for the shiny petals and the pearl embossing for the metallic -y looking petals. So you can see the shimmer that you get from the white Shimmer Delicata ink there and the shine that you get from the embossing on the petals. Again, I'll have a closer look at these cards over on my blog. I have a lot to share with you today. Okay, moving on to the next stamp set. I have this card example here. This one is actually pretty quick to pull together. And I used some more of those Delicata inks that I showed you just a moment ago. Now for this one, I use two different stamp sets. The first is the Concord and Ninth Bits and Pieces stamp set. Now this one, when you first look at it, you may not be sure how to use it, but there are so many ways. I encourage you to go to the Concord and Ninth website. They have so many different examples. They show you how to build a cake out of this, how to do stripes out of this, how to create hearts out of this, everything you could imagine. Well, I wanted to use those lines that you see at the top left there and add some flowers to it. I'm actually going to use this stamp set along with another one of the new stamp sets from Concord and Ninth. This is the Beautiful Branches stamp set. Now this is one of those also that you can use in many ways. You can use the branch along with the leaves where you can layer leaves up, or you can use cherry blossoms on it, or you can use berries on it, many different ways to use. And again, the Concord and Ninth website has a bunch of different examples. I'm just going to use the flowers from this. And you did see me use those sentiments on the earlier cards. Okay, so I'm going to use the flowers from this along with the bits and pieces stamp set that I just showed you to create a fun, colorful background. So I'm stamping the lines from the bits and pieces stamp set in the top corner of some white cardstock. And I'm using Delicata Silver Ink. It's like a gray pigment ink with some shimmer to it. Now you'll notice that when I stamp this, there are some openings. In these openings, I'm going to stamp some flowers and leaves. The leaves are from the same bits and pieces stamp set. And the flowers are from the Beautiful Branches stamp set. I thought it'd be fun to combine the two. I'm stamping the leaves with a green shimmer pigment ink and the flowers with the rose gold. The rose gold is by far my favorite of all the Delicata ink colors. It's like a pink color pigment ink with gold that seems to float on top of it. It's just gorgeous. So I repeated that towards the bottom left of my card and then I'm going to fill up the rest of my card too. I like that you can build your own multicolored background using whatever colors you want. I decided to go for a shimmer look today. Here you can see that shimmer, especially that gold that seems to be floating on top of that rose gold pigment ink on those flowers. I just love it. I also added the centers to the flowers and a hugs die cut from a previous Concord and Ninth hugs die set. Now that little Miss You sentiment is from another new stamp in this Concord and Ninth release, and that is the High There Bear stamp set. Now this is one of those sets that you really got to take a close look at to see how many options it offers. You have this little outline bear that you can color however you want, or you can stamp this layer in it and it looks like you colored it on your own. There's also one that allows you to create a panda bear out of these images. There's also this striped block image on the bottom left where you could just stamp the face on it and you have a fun little element for the center of a card. And there's all kinds of different things that you can stamp in this hand. You can stamp an umbrella, a bouquet of flowers, a balloon, lots of things. So this is one of those sets that you can use in many ways. And there are some great sentiments to match up with the images. Now I made a quick small card to send to my daughter in college who aced a really tough math exam. So I first stamped with the outline bare image, and now I have the shading image that I'm centering up. You can do an acrylic block with this. Now I first stamped it twice with a light brown ink, but decided that was too light. So instead I moved on to a darker brown ink, and I really was happy with the result. But normally you only have to stamp it once, and it looks like you took a ton of time to color this and shade it, but all you did was stamp it. Love those results. Now I stamped a balloon in his hand, a sentiment underneath, 
And here I'm using a Fantastics little inking tool. It's got a little point to it. I'm dabbing it onto a pink shimmer ink pad and then rubbing that ink on his cheeks and in his ears for a little bit of pink with a little bit of shimmer. You can also see that I put glossy accents on the balloon. Now in the background, I just glued a bunch of colorful gems. These are Lucy's Cards rainbow gems. Kind of looks like confetti falling down. And I used Black Nouveau drops on his eyes and on his nose. So this one really didn't take that long at all, but it looks like I spent a lot of time coloring that bear. And remember, I could make a panda bear out of this too using the same stamp set. So there you have a closer look at the new Concord and Ninth release along with some cards. Please know that I'm not on Concord and Ninth's design team, nor do I work for them. I'm just a big fan of their products. Now, for a closer look at all of these cards, be sure to go to my blog. That'll kind of pull it all together for you. The supplies are also linked below in my YouTube description. I appreciate you spending time here with me today, and I hope you have a great week. Take care.